Hey everyone, welcome back to part three of my Create Mod series. So far, the support on the series has been absolutely outstanding, and I really can't wait to drop some more videos. So let's just jump right into it. I know this is going to be a little bit of a longer and more confusing video, so I want to take some time on this. But anyways, we're going to go ahead and create the mechanical mixer, which involves the basin and the empty blaze burner. Then we're going to create the mechanical crafter using the mixer. And then we're going to use the mechanical crafters to create the rotation speed controller. And during this process, we're also going to create the wrench. So a lot of crafting, but this is all leading to our speed controller, which we used in part two. So the last video that we were in. So once again, I apologize if this video is a little bit long. Uh, other than that, there's a couple requirements before you can begin crafting all these items. One, you need access to the nether. So that means that you either need to be on a server, so you can just go into like a server portal or something. You need to build your own nether portal, or you need to use some other mod as a way to get to the nether. Uh, you need to be able to get nether quartz, and you need to be able to spawn a blaze. Uh, so that's, that's about it for that part. Uh, other than that, let me take a trip outside. Um, I highly recommend that you have a second water wheel up and running. So if you need the crafting recipe, that's four oak planks, four buttons, one andesite uh, alloy, and nine, or excuse me, eight oak slabs or any type of slab. Uh, basically, you just attach it onto it with a water source exactly like we did in episode one because you are going to need a certain amount of rotational force in order to power the uh, mechanical crafters, which are going to be placed outside right in here. Now, this little neat machine thing that's going on right here is just the exact same speed coming off of this, uh, these two water wheels. Basically, there's shafts and gearboxes sending it underground and then outputting it right here with just a little cog wheel. This is going to connect to our mechanical crafters, but if you have any issues with how that works, please leave a comment down below. It's exactly on how I did it in episode 2 with any of the machines that needed uh, cog wheels. Uh, and you'll probably see as I go underground on how I kind of did that. Ignore all of these cog wheels. You can see this connects right to uh, the water wheels. It then goes around the border underground. And then that sends it up and right into um, that little gear that's rotating outside. Now that's the perfect speed to get the, the uh, excuse me, the mechanical crafters to work. If the gears are sped up too much, it doesn't work. So right at the moment, the best way to do it is just to do two water wheels and connect it right to the mechanical crafters. Now, as you can see, I do have a lot of cog wheels right here using our trick in uh, episode two with the large cog wheel to a small, to large, small, and so on to get enough speed so that when I place a mixer right against this little cog wheel, we'll actually be able to use the mixer because the mixer needs more speed than a mechanical crafter that's going to be outside. So I know that was a little bit confusing. I might be able to do a video in the future explaining on how to do like two different systems um, off of one energy source. But it, other than that, basically one direction is being sped up, one direction is not being sped up. And then as soon as we make this speed controller, then it's as simple as one block that you adjust for the entirety of the system. Uh, but you can see the mechanical press hasn't changed since episode one. It's still sitting here and doing just fine. Uh, other than that, let's go ahead and jump into the blocks that are required for this episode. Everything on the bottom is just to build a nether portal. If you haven't already and you've forgotten how to build a nether portal, this is literally what you need. Uh, these top three rows are everything you're going to need for this episode. So let's start out really quick with a bunch of crafting. First thing is we're going to put the lapis block right underneath, oops, right underneath the mechanical press, if I can put it under properly. And this is going to turn it into a lapis sheet. So that's all you need to do is put a lapis block right underneath. You can see I've already done that with seven iron sheets. So iron ingots being placed under mechanical press and three gold sheets under mechanical press. If you don't have a mechanical press set up, uh, go ahead and refer to episode one. I talked exactly how to set this exact system up. It was very simple, just a couple blocks and very little resources. So definitely go ahead and check that out. Now... Moving forward, let's just grab all of our materials because we have a lot of crafting that we're going to need to do to kind of get this all done. So the first thing we're going to need to do is make our mechanical mixer. So uh, let's start with the whisk. So the whisk is five iron sheets, two andesite alloys, and it creates a whisk. Next step is we have an andesite casing, two cog wheels are andesite alloy. Of course, we already have the alloy, so we'll make the cog wheels. So eight buttons, one andesite alloy, and now we have cog wheels. We also need to make andesite casing, so six planks, two andesite alloys, and one log, which equals four of those. And then we can go ahead and craft our mechanical mixer, just like so. Uh, next step is we're going to have to use the basin. So this is five andesite alloys, just like if we were uh, making a cauldron out of iron, except it's andesite. 
So now we have a basin. And then now we need to make the empty blaze burner. So two iron bars and two iron sheets. So just like so, now we've crafted these three. Uh, we can actually throw in our basin and our mechanical mixer. And we'll even toss in the rest of our items at the moment. Because uh, we won't need those until we get back from the nether. So our next step is to take our empty blaze burner, find a blaze, and put the blaze inside this. So let me cut to uh, me finding a blaze in the nether. Alright, so I just found a blaze around the corner. This is now my second time fighting him, the first time I actually died. Um, but all you have to do is you don't actually have to fight him. You just have to right click on this with the, uh, the empty blaze burner. And then now he is inside. So now it's a blaze burner. Uh, so the next step is to go back to our world and we're going to actually place this below uh, the mixer. So let's get back there. Okay, so now we have a blaze, uh, basically in our blaze burner. So the only other things you're going to need to grab is the mechanical mixer, the basin, and some coal. You should only need one piece of coal, but if you do make a mistake, you might need a couple extras. But as you know, coal is not that expensive, so you should be able to find some. So we're going to place our blaze burner, just like so. We're going to place our basin right on top. And then we're going to place our mixer, like so as well. Now, if you have your mixer spinning and it says uh, speed restrictions or speed something, any kind of error message, that means that your gear is not spinning fast enough. Uh, the best way to uh, fix that is just like I said, with all of these cogwheels just rotating and rotating and rotating. Uh, go ahead and check out part two where I talk about how to speed up this without having to use more water wheels. And that will actually solve your solution because you are going to need a lot of speed and it would take several water wheels to even be able to come close to this. So our next step is we're just going to build some stairs up at the moment. Um, we're going to grab our copper and we're going to grab our zinc, place our coal right on this blaze burner. We're going to drop our zinc in, our copper in. It's going to go down and spin. And we're going to go ahead and break our basin just to make this easier. Uh, we'll even break our cobblestone really quick. And now we have our brass ingots. We'll place the basin down. So we actually need to turn these into brass sheets. So we'll place that underneath there, have that get pressed, just like so. We'll do it again. There we go. Okay, now we have two brass sheets. So let's grab all of our materials again and do a lot more crafting. There we go. And our next step is we need to make mechanical crafters. Now mechanical crafters, we actually need uh, nine of them. So that means we have to craft this three different times. So the first thing we're going to do is we've already have our crafting tables is let's work on making the brass casings. So the brass casings is just six planks, one log and two brass sheets. So we should already have that in our inventory. Now we have our brass casings. Uh, and then our next step is going to be this electron tube, which electron tube comes with redstone torches, iron nuggets, which I've already shown that you guys had crafted. And it comes with polished rose quartz. Polished rose quartz come from rose quartz, and rose quartz are crafted with nether quartz and redstone dust. So I know that's a lot. Uh, so the way that this works is if you take all of your, or we'll take our nether quartz first, and we'll do all of our redstone. We're just going to turn those all into rose quartz. Then we're going to take a piece of paper and a piece of sand, just like this. We're going to turn it to sandpaper. We're going to put our rose quartz in our left hand, and then we're just going to hold down right click on our uh, sandpaper like this. And it's going to turn it all into polished rose quartz. Now, there's a better way to do this in the future with machines, but this is a nice, easy way to just get this out of the way because we don't need uh, too many polished rose quartz. So now that we have those, we can go into here, or excuse me, we can go into our mechanical crafters, click on our electron tube, and then we can craft our electron tubes. So it's going to be just like so. What was the recipe again? Sorry, we've done a lot of crafting today. So just like this, we'll add our iron nugget, our redstone torch, and our polished rose quartz. And now we have three electron tubes. So let's just make sure we have everything else crafted. We might have to craft another set of cog wheels. So we'll go ahead and craft those with our materials. So now we can make our mechanical crafters, which we're going to there we go, make all nine of them. So now that we have all nine, we're nearing the very end, guys. We're, we're almost there. The next thing is to take this rotation speed controller and we have to craft this integrated circuit. So the integrated circuit is one lapis sheet, four pieces of redstone, polished rose quartz, and three gold nuggets. So let's go ahead and make sure that we have all of this really quick. 
All right, I just want to make sure we had all the materials. We do have all the materials. One thing I forgot to craft is we actually have to take these andesite alloys and we have to make some shafts. That's, th that's the one thing I forgot. So there we go, we have eight shafts. Now, next thing we're going to have to do is open, this, or open the rotational speed controller and you're going to see it's four redstone dust, a thing of lapis, a thing of polished rose quartz, and three gold nuggets. But this is done with mechanical crafting. So let's head outside and I'll show you in how this works. So you can see our gear is spinning. So we're going to take our mechanical crafters. We're going to place one, two, three, four, five, six, and it's going to pop up overstress. But I'll show you how to fix that in a moment and just place one more up top. So that's basically this system right there that you can see is one, five, three. So one, five, three is exactly what we're looking for right here. One, five, three. The only thing is it's overstressed currently, but we can go ahead and fix that by simply taking out our mixer and we'll just throw this back in here for now. We can fix that later with, of course, the speed controller. So now you can see these gears are turning, so that means it works. The only thing that we need to do is actually craft one more thing I've already forgotten is the wrench. So three golden sheets, one cogwheel, and one stick. And now we have our wrench. Very nice and easy. And now, <laughs> I know we've done a lot of steps, guys, I know. We have to make sure all of these arrows are pointing in the correct directions. So let me explain what that means. Basically, this mechanical crafter will have items come from every one of these blocks that we place them in, and we need them to all meet together and then output at the very bottom right here. So a way we can do that is you can see how I can flip this arrow. We're going to go ahead and flip this arrow to point down, this arrow to point left. This one's already pointing down. This one's pointing left. These items are just going to go down. These are going to go to the left, right, and then, whoops, did not mean to break it. And then it's going to go down and connect here. Now, this can go in any organization as long as all of the items meet and then connect to the very bottom one and output. Uh, and that's all we have to do. Next step is to take all of these items, like so, and we're going to have to place them the way that they're placed like this. So we have our lapis sheet at the top. We have a redstone dust, redstone dust polished rose quartz, and our gold nuggets. Now, if you've done it correct, it's going to light up gold and actually start moving and connecting itself to each other. So now we can just go ahead and wait. We're almost we're almost at the end, guys. We've almost made this speed controller. I know it seems some, somewhat complicated, but trust me, we've done it. <laughs> and now it's connecting. And almost there. And it turns into the circuit. And it's going to drop it in a few seconds. There we go. Integrated circuit. So we're almost done now. So we've got the circuit, which was like the hardest part of that whole thing. Uh, next thing we're going to have to do is craft it. So we can open this up. Brass casing, two shafts, you should already have it. And now we have a rotation speed controller, just like so. So there you go, guys. We now have our rotation speed controller, which if you wanted to know on how to use it, just go ahead and hop into part two. But for now, I'll go ahead and hop down here and just show you. Um, in other words, if you go ahead and place it on top of a large gear, it comes down here and you can change your RPMs using the scroll wheel. So you can slow down um, the output. So let me grab, let me grab some shafts really quick so I can show you and how this works. So you can see the shaft is spinning very slow you have the ability to increase it. And you can also even change direction with this thing by changing it to a negative number. Now, if you want to see on how that use or how that is used, please go to part two. You can see on how to uh, basically change the RPMs between machines and why that even means anything. But this is how you create the rotation speed controller. Um, but anyways, I know this was a longer video. I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. I know that this is definitely one of the more uh challenging topics to cover in this mod pack so please leave some comments down below if you are uh struggling on anything uh, i do want to announce that i've just created a discord server so i really hope you guys can join uh there's gonna be a special rank for anyone that joins the discord server and before i hit 1000 subs i know it's an ambitious goal for episode three to already want to go to a thousand subs but i believe i can do it um anyone that joins the discord uh, can go ahead and get that special rank. Also, feel free to reach out to me on there, um, post any screenshots, any help, anything along those lines, and I can help you there as well. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys on the next video.